the beautiful thing about God, too, is that when he gives it to you, he don't just give it to you. He gives it through you to other people as well. Then I got to thinking as I got older, I thought, am I like one of those kids on American Idol that think they can sing? <laughs> you know, I hired these young guys and I, I said, I'm going to give you all three months. That's all the money I got. But I, I made the decision I'm going to invest in myself. And if it doesn't work, that's OK. That'll be God's sign. I'll go work at Target or I'll pop popcorn at a NASCAR track. This is the Cumin Bell Show. Let's just go on and spill the tea. This is one of the realest persons I've ever met. My mission is to encourage every single woman. We're here to lift y'all up. There's no one more effective than moms. You mess with the bull, you're going to get the horns. I need coffee, I need Jesus, and I need therapy. <laughs> If you can bring a smile to people's faces, why would you not? True confidence is knowing who you are and why you're here. Hey, y'all, it's the Kim Gravel Show, and I'm so glad you're here because each and every week we are trying to all come together to level up our lives. And by leveling up, I mean getting better, learning new things, and just talking the whole thing out, just living this fulfilled called life, and we're going to do it together. Now, this week, we have got someone on the show, Zach. Okay, everybody, Zach is with me today. As, Hi, everybody. As usual, every week. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, hi. I got energy today, Kim. I'm so excited I, about our guest. I do too. And listen, I've got my water. So I'm, I'm, but listen, I put a little something, something in it. I got the electrolytes going. My sons have got me going on this electrolyte thing. <laughs> Sorry. When you said he put a little something, something in it, I was kind of worried. Did, I, I, was like, that, that's... I was like, Kim, you don't drink. So I don't like, what What you put in there, Kim? Well, and, and then I said, my sons are teaching me. I was like, oh, that don't sound good at all. Oh, that don't sound that good. Don't sound... These high schoolers, okay. you know, they're a bad Shoot. influence, Kim. You think I trust them as far as I can pick their tails up and throw them? I do not. But anyway, that's a whole nother show. Let's get back to <laughs> so... business. We've had this guest on the show before. We both fell in love with her. I was already in love with her. I'm a big fan. And since then, not to say she came on our show and blew up, but I'm just saying. That's the Kim <laughs> Grafell bump, baby. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm kidding you. She has, her career has just taken off. We had to have her back on the show. Zach, when I tell you this woman is an inspiration, and I love it when people are leaders and inspirers and encouragers and at this stage in her life, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss this guest. It's Leanne Morgan, the hilarious comedian. We'll be right back. Are you stuck? Are you at a place where you know there's more for you? You don't know what that is. And you don't even know if you've got the confidence to step out to even figure out what it is. If that is you, pick up Collecting Confidence, my new book. I'm telling you, if you do if you don't have a compass, if you don't have a true north, if you're saying, Kim, I don't know why I'm here and what I'm here for, but I know it's something, grab this book and read it. It's a light, easy read, but I'm telling you, it'll give you nuggets and, and reveal things about yourself that you didn't even know. It's not only just my story, it's our story. It's that story of struggle to find out what we're called to do and why we're here. Pick up the book and read it. Then let me know how you, you know, hit me up on email and social media and let me know what you thought about it. But let me just tell you something. You have a calling, you have a purpose, and you can walk in the confidence to fully embrace that call. I love you guys. And remember, walk boldly in your collected confidence. Okay, Zach, hang on, gird your loins, you know, <laughs> ground yourself to the ground because... We have one of my favorite comedians of all time. And let me tell you something. That's saying a lot. Because let me just, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but toot, too. But I got comedian friends, y'all. I mean, you come about <laughs> Steve Harvey and I are like this. I mean, he is the OG, okay? And mm -hmm. when I say this woman is one of my favorite comedians of all time, I truly mean it. She has over 2.5 million social media followers. Uh, her Netflix special, y'all, you got to go watch it. I laughed till I peed in my pants. I'm Every Woman is on right now. I got to just go to Netflix and just start streaming, baby, and get ready to laugh. <laughs> get your snack and go. She um, is on a giant U.S. Uh, U.S. tour right now. Go see it. She's in every city. She just She's starting to write her debut memoir. It's going to be out next August. It's called What in the World? Question mark. 
just fill in the blanks there. She's so relatable. She isn't afraid to be a Southern mom who tells it like it is. And y'all, she was just most recently named Forbes 50 over 50. Leanne Morgan, welcome to The Kim Grabell Show. Morgan. <laughs> we are super fancy here, woman. Y'all are. Who yeah, sang we are. that? We, we oh, had to hire know. somebody just for you. Just for you, Leanne. Oh, my Lord. Can I have that? You can. <laughs> you can. You can. <laughs> here we go. Leanne Morgan. Harmony's okay. everything, honey. We spare no expense here, Leanne. None. Oh, my gosh. Well, I've never had anything like that. Thank you. Girl, I love you Thank so much. You. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you're here because this is podcast is going everywhere, and I want everyone to know about you and just experience you. Girl, what in the world? Is God good or what? Do we need to just talk about that first? <laughs> I've done this for 20-something years, and, you know— Barely nobody cared. <laughs> I would get television deals, but they wouldn't make it. But I, you know, things were really not great. Right. And then this to happen to me at 57 after I've raised my children. Yeah. I know that was God's timing. But can can we talk about that a little bit? Because I know you're not shy about your faith and you know I'm not about mine. But there there's something about his timing. That A is unpredictable and B is bigger than we ever dreamed. Would you say, can you relate to that? I can, because I I knew this. I felt this would happen to me when I was a child, like mm. nine or 10 years old. I feel like God you, revealed it to me. I was going to say, did you know that was your calling? I did. I, well, I thought I would think it. And then I think, am I crazy? Nobody else in Adams, Tennessee is talking about being a movie star. Is it just me? Am I alone? Then I got to thinking as I got older, I thought, am I like one of those kids on American Idol that think they can sing? You know? <laughs> and I thought, maybe I'm crazy. And then, um, but I feel like God always revealed it to me. And just yeah. wait, just wait. And through t bad times and when nothing was happening and bad things were happening and and I would say, God, why, what, what is this? What? And he would speak to me and say, just hold on. Trust me, just hold on. And it would always be about my, about this happening for me. It was crazy. And then now they tell me something wonderful every day, or I see some darling little woman in the lobby in Des Moines, Iowa, and she tells me, holds on to me and says, you got me through chemo. Oh, wow. You know, I just, I don't know. It's its sweeter and more wonderful than anything I could have ever right. imagined. And I yes. know God is with me. And I know, I don't, I, I, go, I know he uses all of us. And this is what he put me here for, I guess. I hope I can do it into the glory of God. <laughs> you are doing it. Honey. You, you know, know, I you hope, hope you can. can. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. No, I'm just saying like that you are doing it. You are doing it. That's what I'm saying. And when while you're doing it, and this is the beauty of the the mystery of who God is and when he calls you to do something. A, I say it too, you can trace it back to when you were young. I tell everybody, Leanne, you know what you're made to do when you're young. Now, life beats you up and we forget about it and we the whole world is conspiring to rob us from it. The entire but he it's never too late, is it? It's never too late. He's right on time and there's no plan B. Right. And and that's why I named the second tour the Just Getting Started Tour, because I feel like I I'm it. just getting started at 57. And I, and I want women and men to know it's never too late. It's not too late. It's not. Leanne, and why do you think that is? Like, why do you think? Because I was going to say to you, too, um, you know, we'll probably talk offline, but let's talk right here because we're here. But I, it, it's the beautiful thing about God, too, is that when he gives it to you, he don't just give it to you. He gives it through you to other people as well. And to me, that's what you're doing. Like how you say that little woman in, uh, in uh, Iowa came said, you got me through chemo. And then how you're inspiring women and men um, that are in this age of their life, this time of their life, the season to get out and do what your dreams and goals are. Isn't that the truth, though? He's he's so omniscient, omnipotent, whatever that word is. He's so that. Yes. 
And just, yes, all of that. You are so that. smart and you can articulate well. The things <laughs> like that blubber <laughs> over. But yes, he is so big and carries us in the palm of his hand and he knows yeah. what. Like the things, you know, I've shot a movie with Reese Witherspoon and Will Ferrell. Oh, that was my next question. And, and that came out of nowhere. Well, I know where that was. That was a God thing. And it I was. and um and yeah, things that are just so much bigger and then they're the right timing and the people he put in my life and put in my path that believed in me and lifted me up. I mean, i I could go back and pinpoint that from the time I was nine years old. Now, Leanne, was Reese Witherspoon as Southern as I hope she is? Yes. Isn't that great? And darling. So she knows what butter beans, collard greens, and fried cornbread are. Yes, she does. Praise God. Yes, she does. Okay, then. Uh Okay, so she is a sister, a Southern sister. She is. (laughs) Because her little mama was raised in, I believe, Harriman, Tennessee, close to where Mm -hmm. I've raised my children. And then... um, and they moved around because her daddy, I think, was in the Air Force, maybe, as a physician. But she was raised in Nashville. and I love it. She, uh, yes, is very, I think, very Southern and brilliant. Well, that's, that's of course she is. How could she not be to put you in a movie, too? Um, it took you so long to get here, though. Okay, you're finally a movie star. You just did your first movie. It took you so long to get here. How did you stick it through, Leanne? The, during the ups and downs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because that's, I mean, yeah. it sounds fantastic now, but there were some hard times. There were really hard times, and there would be times when I, I could not get booked. Nobody cared. Um, and I was doing horrible gigs. And um, But I always prayed about it, and I felt like God would n- did not shut that door. I've always listened to my gut. That's one thing. I've got a lot of flaws, and I can't do math, and I there's a lot of things I've got bad wrong. But I listen to my gut, and I always felt like I would pray about it, and I would say, is this what I'm supposed to be doing, God? I mean, is this ain't going well. Is this what I'm, you know, and, he, and I, he never shut that door on me. I felt like I would listen, and it would be like, keep going, keep going. Right. Because it's hard to keep going when you're not seeing anything, when you're not, you know, when you're not seeing any breadcrumbs, when you don't know where to go. And a lot of people are sitting here listening to you right now going, well, that can happen for Leanne. It can never happen for me and what I want to do. What would you say to that? I would say that th- this is what changed for me because um, I was really getting down. Things were mm-hmm. really not going well. I had done a dry bar special. I had gotten a lot of views what, like 50 about, about when, when did that happen when did when was all that happening in relation to the blow up that was in 2018 i believe okay. i shot that okay okay and it and the dry bar came out and um and it got a lot of views and i got some fans but i could not sell tickets nobody cared my manager was putting me in comedy clubs and i was not selling not many comedy clubs a lot of people wouldn't book me and um and they were saying, we love her. She's sweet. She doesn't get drunk and fight in the parking lot. But we're not going to have her back. She can't sell tickets. And then um, I was getting a lot of work. It was sweet. It was like a lot of churches, women's groups. And I love those things are easy, fun. You get a bunch of women together, and they're selling Mary Kay in the lobby, and there's a taco <laughs> truck out front. You could get up there and just spin your own purse, and they go nuts because women are so fun together. But I was doing a lot of those kind of things where they would say, well, we really don't have a big budget, and then we really we can't pick you up at the airport. So I'd get in an Uber with somebody that I thought was going to murder me. <laughs> and then, you know, or say to me, I've never felt this way about anybody in my life. I, I'm going to need your phone number. I'm in love with you. And you're like, what? So I, it was a year of that that right. I was worn right. down. Sure. And I thought, sure. if this is, and I remember praying about it and saying, God, if this is what it's going to be. I don't want I've it. had a good time. I've had a good run. But, I, you know, I can't do this. I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be worn down for no money, you know, for very little money. I, this is not, I'm okay. I'll go to work at Target. Right. And then, At least you'd get um, a discount. At least you'd get a discount, yeah. girl. And I love a Target. <laughs> but um, 
uh, last ditch effort. What I started doing is I was I'd always been a comedy fan, and I had been watching. I've always been a Jim Gaffigan fan, and I'm oh, good yes. friends with Nate Bargatze. Mm-hmm. And Nate, Nate Bargatze was blowing up, and I was look, watching what he was doing. And I think this is important in anybody's line of work. If you see somebody successful that's doing what you want to do, what are they doing? Watch them, right. see what they're right. doing, learn from right. somebody. So I started watching what they were doing, and I said to my manager at the time, I said, I, they have got social media people, and I'm up here, you know, putting up pictures of beagles or dachshunds, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and, my, and he didn't understand how it worked right. either. how impactful like, it is. Yeah, and he goes, I don't know. And I go, I think I need social media people. And he goes, you can't afford it. He, like, tried to talk Ooh. me out of it. Yeah, nobody reads the newspaper anymore. No. Nobody's listening. To, I mean, there are radio stations, but it's just a whole different world. And I realized, world, and I give myself that credit. I'll give myself a Snoop give Dogg it. pat on the back. There you go. Brush your shoulder say, off, Leanne. <laughs> yeah, because Snoop Dogg says, you know, sometimes you got to say, you know what? I thank, thank myself for doing yeah. that. I, I want to thank me. Yeah, I want to thank yeah. me. I want to thank me for working like a mule. But also, <laughs> I thought... I went against my manager and I said, I'm doing like, I'm Go doing this it. and I know right. it's expensive, but it was the first time in 20 something years that I had really invested in my career. Like I went years without a website. If I made money in gigs and I, you know, I made money through the years, but not a lot, but I, it was okay. I would buy my children uniforms. I get their hair cut. That was kind of me and Chuck Morgan's silent thing if you're going to do this little thing called comedy then I, you you can take care of the groceries and the you know whatever so i always and the kids, I never put, extras yeah and i never put money into a website i never saved any money and then he'd have to pay my taxes and that was a whole nother thing april was a <laughs> terrible time in our household <laughs> but but he would, but I didn't have a website. I didn't. I had like three headshots in 20 years, which is stupid. <laughs> and I and I would get somebody's cousin to take my picture in the yard, sure. you know. Sure. And, um, been there. So been, been I, there. <laughs> totally been there. So I um, decided to invest in myself. And I thought, and I told, I hired these young guys and I, I said, I'm going to give you all three months. That's all the money I got. But I, I made the decision. I'm going to invest in myself. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. That'll be God's sign. I'll go work at Target or I'll pop popcorn at a NASCAR track. I've always thought that would be a fun <laughs> job, too. And, uh, and but darn, if those young guys who were darling put one or two clips, I can't remember, but they, they went viral. And it was different than Dry Bar. Dry Bar went viral for me. But I could not sell tickets. I don't know what the difference was. If people that watch Dry Bar, a lot of them don't go out. I don't know. But that those clips caught fire, just like somebody set off a match. And, and then I think people were like, well, what else does she have? Who is this right. woman? Right. I think that's funny. I'll go look at that. And then they started calling comedy clubs all over the United States. We want Leanne Morgan. And I didn't even have an agent. That agents would pass on me, would not take me. And... And I started selling out all over, and then that, and then this all happened after that. Well, this is the thing, Leanne. That's what I think. You're so, you know, like I love. You're hilarious, but you are very savvy. Let's let's go ahead and pat you on the back. With you won't do it, I'll do it. Because you always bet on yourself. You're not waiting for someone to notice. You are being noticed. You are putting yourself out there. You even self-produced this Netflix special, did you not? I did, and I, but I, but let me tell you, I've got an unbelievable team, and they advised me. But yes, they said you want to own that for yes. your children Smart. after you're yes. gone, and um, and and really, Netflix took a a, a big chance on me. I'm the only they, grandmama, honey, from Tennessee. With, yeah, but it's with been so popular. Breasts. Thank you, but I they took a chance on me, and my, and so who knows what my next deal will be, but. For that, it was for me to lease that to them, I think is how they do it. Anyway, yeah. it was, but I think that was also, you know, them taking a chance on me. And I'm not a big name, uh, you know, and so they, th- that's what the deal we ended up making. But yeah, I was executive producer and 
Yeah, I had to pick out the graphics and the everything. I think that's why the special and you in particular have been so why your career is on fire. I think everybody can relate to you, Leanne. It really is. You're fearless in what you put out there to the public, and it's so relatable. Oh, thank you, Kim. Well, I'm serious. Let me tell you that um, I've always told too much, and my sister is very introverted and quiet. And she would say to me growing up, like, you tell too much. I've always just told everything. And I and my mama does too, Lucille. And I, I don't know. I've just always put it all out there. It's so nicely in. I think we've lived in such an age of filters and fake and presenting the best thing and, and putting on the best show and never showing your flaws or your problems or your upset. Like I, I, I said something the other day on air at QVC and I just said, I just want to just absolutely knock every teeth out of my out of the mouth of my children. <laughs> Because they're, they're teenagers, and all they're doing now is like, uh, blah, blah. I mean, it's just the smart mouth, cocky little 16-year-old. I said, I brought you in. I'll take you out. I mean, you know, and I, I saw more tops because I said that. It's because it's relatable. I was in L.A. working on my new hour for this Just Getting Started tour. This is a whole new right. thing separate from Netflix. And my team, you know, said, oh, do you want to go to the famous comedy store? Which I had been there as a patron, and I— and I had loved it, and I like 30 years ago, and I dreamed of being on that stage, and they put me up, and they put me up in the in the belly room, which is the little room like where people get at, start uh, open mic, because it's a big deal to get on that main stage, and people like Quentin Tarantino and you know Elon Musk are watching the main stage, and they were like, we're not going to put you on that stage, we'll put you in this little hole called the belly room. So anyway, I get up there and I'm talking about some of my new material that is very relatable and um, about my kids and them growing up. And I had to follow a guy talking about porn and his girlfriend catching him, watching. I don't even know. And then I go out in the hallway at, com at the comedy zone. I mean, at the uh, comedy store and they're like, get out of the hallway. You can't even stand in the hallway because you're not anybody. And I go and stand outside, <laughs> and the young people that had been in the belly room came by, and they said, can I hug you? Oh, Leanne. And they hugged me. And I go, well, yeah. And I think that you're, you're on to something with everybody is sick of it. The world, it seems like it's coming to an end. The world's on fire. <laughs> and I think everybody... <laughs> yeah, and I think everybody is torn up and worried. We got enough to worry about that. I right. don't. That I don't think. I think when they hear somebody like me, who's a mama, who talks about something familiar when they were with their mama in a minivan or whatever, it's comfort to them. It's home. It's home. Yeah, and I think I've hit that niche. But I have raised a bunch of kids, and I am a grandmama, and I do cook, and I do like to do people's laundry. But I do. I think I think people, young people too, need just comfort and not. You're right. A big filter that everybody's not. Everybody doesn't have millions of dollars. Everybody's not in a bikini on a yacht. All of that business. And I want to know who those people are that are because I think it's less than half a percent of the population. I haven't been in a bikini ever. I couldn't even wear a bikini <laughs> when I could. You know, it's just oh. one of those things, Leanne. You know what I mean. Oh, I wish if we could tell every young person in the world, yeah. wear that bikini when you think you are not what the you need shizzle. to be. You're yeah. wrong. You're, You're wrong. wrong. You are dead wrong. Dead I wrong. I would, I would kill to be have that body <laughs> that I hated back when I was in my 20s. I would, oh. I would absolutely just go and take somebody out to have that back. <laughs> I know. And then my little mama says to me, who's 80, who's so wise, Lynn, don't don't be unhappy with this body now because no, you're going right. to dream. You're going to wish you had that body. <laughs> and this body's been good to me. You know, I it's, could it's get a, pregnant like that. <laughs> I could breastfeed. <laughs> you know, I have eaten white flour and sugar and drank Diet Coke. Your I've entire been constipated life. for 30 years, and my yes. body's still working for me. It's a miracle of God. The kidneys are there. <laughs> it everything. is a miracle. Handle a lot of pain. Had, had three children. Birthed three children through your private parts. <laughs> well, That's a miracle. Two through, through, two through my doings. 
one C-section, honey. So there was okay. all kinds of stuff going <laughs> two on. Through my, no, no, no. I've never heard that. Two through my doings. <laughs> doings. I'm going to have to well, beep that. I don't know. I'm beeping it. <laughs> no, you don't beep it. Like two, it. Two, two through my doings. You have to say that because my doings ain't been doing very much lately. So I love calling it doings. Travis is going to yeah. be getting a doings text. I'm going to say it. My doings had <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That's I overshare. I like See, that word. Leanne is always sharing too much. She's sharing too much. You're going an extra mile, and I love it. I love it. Okay. Just another word uh, for private parts. That's it. I love that. You're doing. Thank you. As you all may know, I have been on this weight loss journey, this awakening, so to speak, of just how to really take care of my health. Um, mentally getting on the right track with deciding that I was going to lose weight, but also really um, eating the right things that are good for my body that's going to give me the fuel I need to keep my energy up and keep my weight loss journey going. And that factor has helped me. They are the most amazing pre-made meals, but they're not frozen. They're not processed. They're fresh, whole foods that you get. You pop in your microwave, two minutes, you're one and done, and you're getting a delicious, yummy, good-for-you meal. If you want to get on that weight loss journey with me, this is the way to start. Let me tell you what I do, too. I have a little few little secrets, some little tidbits. I like to put some Southern on it. I like to throw my spices on. I like to zhuzh it up. I like to add that Southern flavor. And you can because they're fresh meals. They're not frozen. So if you want to try them, head on over to factormeals.com slash Kim50 and use my code Kim50 to get 50% off. That code is Kim50 at factormeals.com slash Kim50 and get your 50% off. Get your good meals, get on this weight loss journey with me, and let's do it together. Okay, so <laughs> how long did it take your kiddos to get comfortable? Were they always comfortable with you being on stage telling all their business? Yes. Now, in middle school, they said, do not speak my name out of your mouth like Will Smith <laughs> and Chris Rock. They said, do not <laughs> And I That's didn't. Like a, I was. I had said one thing about Charlie going through puberty oh on Lord. WIBK radio in Knoxville, and I thought he was at school. And I thought, well, I didn't think I said anything wrong. And I, I was just talking about him going through puberty, and one of his little friends was going to an orthodontist appointment and heard it. Oh and, Lord! And came to school and said, "Your mom was talking about your puberty," and Charlie <laughs> said, "Do not ever do that again." And I didn't. I did not. I took it very seriously. And and Maggie also said, do not come to this middle school with those yoga pants on. But anyway, <laughs> I I need to write that down. You did write it down. But then after middle school, they were like, we don't care what you do. Because they, you know, they didn't even care about me then. Right. And then, but when they were little, Nick at Night came to our house and filmed and all that. And they loved all that. But really and truly, and I've heard them say in interviews now, as grown children they said you know mom was always our mom first and yeah. we knew she did this but it it really i mean she, you know she tried to do it in a way like i would do private corporate things or you know i wouldn't i would go for one night at a time or maybe a weekend but but they said we just it wasn't that big i mean we knew she did it but it wasn't this like it is now so we never felt like we took your, a second. Your career after. was never, it was important, but they always knew they came first. They came first. Their daddy was always out working like a mule, traveling. They, I picked them up from school. I've never had to hire anybody to tend to them. If, I, if my parents would help me, my cousin would help me. So I always put them, and I was able to, and I wanted to. They were my, you know, first. Because their daddy was gone trying to make a living. So right. I had to, it was me, and I wanted it to be me. But that's the point. That's my whole point is that, and, and anybody listening right now or watching right now, that didn't slow your career down. It just, it just wasn't the right time. And now I think, Leanne, like you said, those kids gave you that hug. I, can I just say, and I don't mean to get all serious, but we can because you're that deep, but we are in a crisis of confidence. We are in a crisis of comfort where people don't, they need a mama. This world needs a mama to go, now look, don't do that. You're too good for that. I love you too much. Come over and give me a hug and eat my pot roast. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Don't you think yes. that's what the world needs right now? Yes. We don't need all the rough and tumble. We need to be, 
I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking just because I'm a mom too. I don't know. I know. I agree with you. And I think that they're, um, I did a podcast yesterday where it was young girls talking about, you know, relationships and stuff. And all I wanted to say was, don't be doing that. Right. <laughs> He's a ding dong. You don't need to wipe your feet on, you know, or no. whatever she or whatever. But I think, yeah, there's right, there's wrong, they're stupid, right. they're smart. I mean, I, I, and I'm at that age where I just have to say it. But and I, 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 you've earned it. You've earned it. Yeah, and there's right way to do things, and there's, you know, things that I made a lot of stupid mistakes. Me too. I've done Me too. horrible, stupid Me too. mess. And I know now what I would not do again if I could do over. And I and I think young people need to know that and want to know do. that. Do you have any regrets, Leanne? No, I mean I regret things that I did and that happened. But I but then I think you know what they made me who I am. Yeah, you learned. Yeah, I learned, and I you know life is. That I think that we're that just happens, and I forgive myself. You know, if yes. Jesus can forgive oh. me. You know, I've forgiven myself, and I've yes. let, and I've forgiven people, and yeah. I've just let that go. I can't, you know, live in that. And I mm -hmm. do think that women, we we regret. We beat ourselves we, up. We do. We do. We do. And we men beat can most up. time, yeah, men can just go. Well, you know, it happened. It happened. But, but I don't much anymore because I think, oh my gosh. I mean, I was a child, or I was, a, you know, 21 years old, or whatever. And my little mama always used to say to me, Lucille, she would say, God does not hold anything against you that you did before the age of 21. She was like, it's in Scripture. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, I don't think it is in Scripture. But, you know, she's right. She's right. How, how, so the social media blow up was was really that thing that just, like you said, caught in fire. How do you handle criticism? from people on social media? And do you get a lot of it? You probably don't get a lot of it, but if you do, how do you handle it? There's a lot of people out there that that are jealous or that are, that that you know, sit yeah. behind a keyboard and, and can bully. How do you handle criticism? Well, when Drybar came out, I got more hateful comments than I've ever, and I think we all did on Drybar. There was something about that time and maybe we went into the pandemic and people were just, I don't know what was wrong, but they said horrible things to me, and it got me down. It got me okay. down. And then my middle child, who is so smart, Maggie, said, you know what, Mom? I was at her apartment in Chattanooga, and she said, I was telling her how it, it really hurt my feelings. And she goes, you know what? Jimmy Fallon has people on, and they read them, like Jennifer Aniston will read what people have said about her, Blake Shelton. Um, I think it was Jimmy Fallon. Maybe it was... Yeah, I think so. But anyway, these stars would take that power back by reading the comments and, and get so tickled over them because they're crazy. And Maggie said, let's do that, Mom. Let me film you. I was sitting on her bed that we bought at Costco. And she <laughs> said, let me film you and, and, t and read some of these crazy comments. And we did, and we laughed so hard that we were weak. And it was stuff like, I'd rather have an abdominal wound than listen to you. You're so not funny. Or you said the word butthole, and I cannot listen to comedy innocently anymore. And I mean, just <laughs> stuff that had worried me to death. And we then when you read it out loud, you think, oh, my gosh, that is so <laughs> funny. And it really took that. I got my power back, and I thought, yeah. you know what? God loved that little man that would rather have an abdominal wound. Than God, to bless him. Talk. Mm -hmm. God bless him. And I, they asked me in, in um, Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal in July. I was in part of that, and I was in the Variety's Top Ten Comics to Watch. And on that panel, they asked us, what do you do about these people, these haters and these people that comment on stuff? And there was a lot of young co comedians coming up on that panel. And, Lord, I was the oldest one and a grandmama. And I just said, you know what? That's sad. That is sad. If somebody's got to sit and have time to do that, God love them, you know, pray for them. Because that, yeah. I mean, I do, I think that's sad. Well, and it's 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 part of this social media and I can say anything I want to situation that we've got going on in this world, which I don't agree with it. But, but the thing is, there is a confidence in 
where you're at right now. And I think for everybody listening to us, Leanne, and, and watching your journey, and it's just, you're like you said, you're just getting started. It, it's, you've got to have this kind of toughness, this kind of confidence, this kind of security, I think in your personal life, as well as your professional life to do what you're doing. Yes. And I don't think I would have had this at 20, 30. I think I would have crumbled. I think it's me being at my age and in my life and this time in my, with my faith that I think, you know what, if I'm, if God's happy with me, if I'm, I just can't worry about everybody else. And I also think it's being tired. I think you get to a point where you're like, you know what? I'm too tired to be worried about everybody else. This is who <laughs> it is. This is who I am. And, I, right. and it, like it or not. That's your I'm third exhausted. book. I'm too tired to care. That's your third book, girl. I'm too tired to care. Right. I'm too tired to care. Oh, you're now, in your third book, Kim. That's fine. Oh, God. Well, she's a walking, like, soundbite. I know. Yeah, right honey, you've got unbelievable ideas, Kim. Yeah. Well, honey, they're your ideas. I'm just telling them back to you. I'm too I'm tired to care. I ain't got no time to care about what you're thinking about and what all's going on. I'm tired. I'm just trying to lay in bed and watch my Leanne Morgan Netflix special. That's all I want to do. In fact, I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to rewatch it. Oh, you angel. But I, do, gonna, I don't want to be like, oh, everything's so wonderful and I don't ever worry and I don't ever get nervous because I do. Right. But for the most part, I just think it's my maturity in life, my it time is. in life. I've got these it's two grandbabies. You. Oh, when you have grandbabies and you... okay. Oh my gosh! I hope you receive this. I mean, I'm t- 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 it is a whole, it. It. it is a whole nother love. It's it's not better than your children because I adore my children and I've been in love with them and I'm crazy about them and I'm very close to all of them. Were this you crazy about them? In the t- I know, but were you crazy? Okay, help me out personally. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be selfish here for a second. Were you crazy about them when they were teenagers? Leanne, well, you know, I-, I did a whole bit about Maggie being so hateful when she was 16. It went viral. Okay. And I, it had 50 million views. <laughs> and I think it was because, and people bring teenage girls to my shows. Oh, my and, gosh. And they'll Leanne. go at her. <laughs> and then and she'll go, but my, when Maggie was 16, I think this is what I think happens. I think that. They know they're leaving. They have to grow up. They're worried. They feel a tug away from you. They know they've got to go make these decisions. They got to take that darn ACT. I know the devil. That that's mess. the devil. Awful, and it means nothing. It means anyway, <laughs> but it you're means like, you nothing. better get a good grade. But you, it means nothing. But you better get a. Uh huh. <laughs> it's gonna affect your future. No, it won't. If you only knew what I made on my ACT. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the University of Tennessee let me in, but I think back then it was just a, they, they didn't put that much into it. But I, I will go to my grave knowing my ACT score. My children, when I get the flu and I'm have and I'm del- and I'm like hallucinating and I've got a high fever, they're like, "What's your ACT score?" Trying to find it out, and I do not. I am. They'll never know it. You'll take it but, into the grave. Take it to the yeah, grave. But I think that God makes them hateful because he knows that you're torn up. You're grieving because they're leaving. They are they don't want to be dependent on you, but they are, but they don't want to be. And they're struggling and they're trying and all that together. I believe that God allows that and they get so hateful that then you can let them go on to college or wherever they're going to go. And it's so much easier because they have been so hateful and you're scared of them. <laughs> But they come back around. They come back around, and they're your very best friend. All right, Leah, that's where I'm at, honey. I am at the get on up and get your college cup going. It's time. You got a year, baby. You out. Bye, Felicia. I mean, that's where we're at. (laughs) (laughs) And then the next night, I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do with it? Okay. So I'm an emotional wreck, too. That's it. I'm saying God has made them evil so that I want to kick them out. But they come back around. But they come back around. Now, they'll be in their 20s. It's going to take a long time. Well, I could but, take a break for a minute. Yeah, I could use a break. And I think, see, boys are even, I mean, girls are hateful and cut you quick, like tell you stuff about your hair or something that messes <laughs> with you. But boys, like, just start, you know, ignoring you or saying, or roll, right. eye rolling. And that's hard because that's your boy. 
Yes. But they are really trying to be independent and they want to and go that's a on, good on thing. their own. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. If they All were right, down Leanne. and wanted to stay up under you, that would be something to worry about. Oh, I'm not. Well, mine are ready to spread their wings and prepare to fly, which is good. But the eye rolls and the bra, I mean, the, the, the verbiage they use. I don't even understand. I think I got to Google it to see what they say. And then they talk. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what did you just say? I don't understand. So I was, blah, blah. I mean, they talk like they don't, Mumbling. they don't enunciate. I know. So, but you know what? I'm going home tonight. Exactly what I'm doing. I'm putting on the Ann Morgan special. I'm every woman, and y'all better watch it, too. Okay, Leanne, before we let you go, you know we do this every show. We ask rapid-fire questions. Rapid-fire questions. I don't want you to think about it. I just want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Okay. All right. When you are popping your popcorn at the NASCAR track, do you like it sweet or salty? Salty. Okay. Okay. If your kids wrote a thank you note about something from their childhood, what would they thank you for? Being fun. <laughs> Was your husband not fun? No, he's not okay. fun. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows it, and he don't want anybody to be fun. And he, he takes it. pride in it. <laughs> I think they would say, thank you, Mom, for being so fun. so fun. We had a ball. Mm-hmm. Okay. If biscuits could talk, what advice would they give? They would say, you probably shouldn't be eating me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> if your life was made into a movie, if your life story was made into a movie, what would the title be? What pops in my mind is um, jewelry, jewelry girl, jewelry, jewelry girl. Yeah. Jewelry girl. I jewelry. Yeah. Because oh I sold God. jewelry in women's oh, I, houses like Mary Kay when I got started. Uh, I, I had no jewelry idea. girl. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to hear that. I can't wait to read your memoir. Who would play your lead? Who would play you in the movie? I think, I think little Reese Witherspoon could. Now, I was getting ready to say the same 100. thing. I weigh a hundred, probably two hundred pounds more than she does. It doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. And she comes to my waist, but I, I mean, I think she could do it because she would summer, totally like do it. Say. Right? No, I t- listen. I always say, like, for me, if anybody ever play, I want, I want my player to play up. I don't want it to be the real me. I want it to put. <laughs> I need elevate me on screen. I'm fine with that. Yes. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, if we peeked inside your fridge, what would we see? You would see a lot of pickles. I've got a Ooh, thing I about love pickles. sweet or so, uh, uh, like uh, butter because people don't know about bread that's and a butter. very southern thing. Bread and butter p- pickles are huge. Bread and butter and relish okay. and chuckle oh, say, please don't bring any more bread and butter. P-. But I get to the store and I'm like, oh my gosh, do we have any bread and butter? P-? So I buy more. So then now, there's you- a bunch of jars. That's mine too. I don't know what it is about the sweet relish. Now, do you make egg salad with sweet relish? Yes. Okay, so that's a southern thing too. Most people don't do that. Well, that's what I do. Yeah, and like you oh, go up, up north, or they don't make egg salad. Or uh, in California, they don't make egg salad with with uh, sweet relish. And I, they don't know what they're missing. They don't know what they're uh-uh. missing because it's like a big deviled egg. It's ooh, ooh, it loo. Okay, I'm moving on because I'm hungry. Um, if you were ever arrested in high school, what would it have been for? Making out in people's okay. private property. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> In cars, right. making out cars. on people's farms. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that is that could have been illegal back then. Now I'll take just the making out. Let's just keep it there. <laughs> um, what's your favorite go to karaoke song? Um, you know, I've never done karaoke a lot, and I know that people talk about that, but I think it would have to be September Earth Wind and Fire. Oh yeah, do you remember? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, honey, that's a good. I'm gonna have to crank that out. So I'm going home. Okay, um, if you had a dinner party, who or who is one person that you would not leave off the list and have to invite? I would like for Elvis to be there. Oh, wouldn't you though? He's been on my mind lately. Hmm. Let me wouldn't tell you, you this. Yeah. I just talked to her producer about something, and his little mama. Grew up next to Elvis in Memphis, and she was 13, and she was his dog sitter. He had a dog when he started making it and going on the road, and his whole family would go with him. And she said that he was precious and very good to her and sweet about that dog. And I don't know. I just I I think being a Tennessee girl, and we always loved our Elvis. He's just been on my mind lately. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Um, 
Last question. Well, celebrity crush. Let me ask you one. I always ask this. Celebrity crush. Matthew McConaughey. I know. I love him. Don't you just want to just sop him up with a biscuit? I love him. I think I do too. I think he's pretty, but I also think he looks sweet and down to earth. And, and loves he's got the an Lord. amazing wife. Yeah. Oh, I, th- I know he loves the Lord. Now don't get me going. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's like I got one last question. That's it. We are like I am obsessed with you. I'm your biggest fan. I'm gonna start stalking you since you. you're just getting started, girl. That's the that's the next tour, right? I'm just getting started. Yes, yes. What's what's next for you? I really hope to do more movies and television. I love it. And I well, you know, when I got started, I wanted to be a sitcom star because I'm that age where I grew up watching Roseanne and Ray Romano and Tim Allen and all, and that that's what I really wanted. And I think that's more in my future now. But I loved, I enjoyed shooting a movie, and I maybe I think I can do it. I know you I'm can. Not Meryl Streep, but I mean, I think <laughs> I could do comedy. But that's, I think that's what I'd like to do. I think that's what you're going to do, and we're going to just sit back and watch it. I can't wait to have my appointment TV with Miss uh, Leanne Morgan. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I love you dearly. Thank you, Kim. Thank I love you, you Angel, for lifting me up, you doll. Thank you. Honey, listen, you are one of a kind, and you know what? God don't make no junk or make mistakes. When he told you that at nine, he meant it, and I am just, I'm your biggest fan. There you go. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. All right, come back. Come back after the next special so we can promote it too. Okay. You know what, Zach? I absolutely know why she was Forbes 50 over 50. I think it's because it's when she said it's just never too late, it was just the right season in her life and her career is blowing up and it's all based around these relatable stories. I I just want to tell everybody out there don't give up. Yes. What? Don't give right? up. She's just getting started. She's 57. She's just getting started. She's 57. And can I tell you, she's now got something really good to say, worth listening to. I mean, think about it. You can see, you can get comedy anywhere. You can, you can, a click of a button, you can, you know, do anything now. But her story and who she is at this season in her life it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. It, it just matters. Are you doing what you're called to do? And she knew yeah. it at nine years old. I hope this. <laughs> That's amazing. Zach, isn't that amazing? I hope this, yeah. this, episode, this episode and this show has encouraged you listening or watching right now that there's something inside of you that has been inside of you for so very long. Find out what it is and take the first step and don't have fear about it. Maybe it's not been the right time. And maybe your time is now. And keep right? going. If you got keep it, going. keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Maybe your time is right now because you're just getting started too. All right. Until next time. Uh, we love you. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful um, week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. And Zach, um, bye, y'all. <laughs> bye, everybody. That's all I want to say. Bye. Put it all out there. But... Um, Lord, what was I going to say? I'm 57 and I'm just lost my train of thought. I do the same thing, Lee. I swear, it's so relatable. That's, I'm telling you, I'll go downstairs and forget what the heck I went downstairs for to get. You are amazing. Kim, you are. Uh-uh, Honey, you, you sit are. and say the mo- You are the hype girl. You make I me feel you. like Michael Jackson. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and listen, you just say bye, Felicia. I got to go. Bye. <laughs>